Fantasy news. Do you even know what is at stake if the fantasy news ceases? It's flowing. Space goblins are gonna invade Earth. These are an abomination to goblin kind. They get their space tentacles everywhere. This is a very serious issue. The Pentagon has talked about this. The who? Your weird uncle that nobody loves and who keeps inviting you to sketchy Facebook groups has talked about this. The world, nay, the universe, would not be the same without fantasy news. And so, it must flow. I'm Jay from Captured in Words, and I am your non-goblin guest host for Fantasy News this week, and today we got a lot of news to get into. I have been scouring the Discord server looking for the best news. Scouring is not a word I ever use. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting off with some Brandon Sanderson news. Good old Brando Sando seems to have some sort of Hollywood deal in the works. He talked about how Hollywood has noticed that other fantasy shows that aren't the Game of Thrones can still work, like The Witcher and Arcane and Shadow and Bone. Sando is one of the best-selling authors that has yet to have an adaptation. Uh, this is the year that Hollywood came calling and came calling in a very big way, even before the Kickstarter. This is the year that Sanderson has had numerous meetings with all the streaming services, as well as a lot of studios and producers. So it seems like there is something in the works here. But he is being very careful with who he chooses because he has all the rights and he doesn't actually need the money. So he's being very careful to make sure that his adaptation will be good. This is incredibly exciting for any Sanderson fan. I wanna know what you think in the comments the adaptation is going to be. I imagine it's going to be a little hush-hush for a while. We're probably not going to know what it is for a long time, but I just can't wait to see the Cosmere come to the screen. Now, I should note, whatever this is, it's not going to be a Stormlight Archive adaptation, but he does say when Stormlight gets a TV show, he wants to be heavily involved. When Stormlight happens as a television show, I want to be deeply involved. I want to be writing some of the episodes, uh, co-creator. I don't have the skill set for that yet. Now because of this, as well as the secret projects, Stormlight Book 5 is going to be delayed until 2024 rather than 2023. And I think we can all forgive Sanderson for that. I've written five extra novels in the last Bruh. two years. Five extra novels. Moving on to some George R.R. R. Martin news. In a recent podcast, he discussed the winds of winter, and he said that he is close to finishing up a chapter of Tyrion, and that there's one more chapter estimated to finish up Tyrion's arc in the book. Several other character arcs are also close to being finished, while some are not so close. But considering this is the first time he's talked about finishing anything related to this book, it's actually pretty exciting. It's encouraging news. He he also says that Winds of Winter will be longer than A Dance with Dragons, and not 30 pages longer, but more like 300 pages longer. And he mentions the possibility of this being split into two volumes, or his editor holding him a gunpoint to cut things down. And then in a recent blog post, he talked about how Winds of Winter is going to be very different from the finale of Game of Thrones. People who survived in the TV show might not necessarily survive in A Song of Ice and Fire and not all the characters who died in the show will necessarily die in the book. Now, obviously, there's gonna be a lot of comparison with both endings. You know, most people were not that happy with the final season of Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, there's also gonna be a lot of people that are automatically bitter with A Song of Ice and Fire because it's taken so long, which I think is unfortunate. I hope it does get the ending that it deserves. On June 13th, we had nine new photos revealed from the prequel series, House of the Dragon. In the first photo, we see the Great Council of Harrenhal. Then in the second, there appears to be a weirwood tree in King's Landing, which definitely shows how different the world of Westeros was at this time in history. We also get to see a different rendition of the Iron Throne, which is closer to how Martin described it. Uh, and then I won't comment on the rest of the photos, but there is a great article breaking them down if you want to give that a read. Also, Fire and Blood is back on sale right now from Penguin Random House. You can get both the trade paperback and mass market paperback with new tie-in cover art from House of the Dragon. Now we got some behind the scenes of Amazon's The Rings of Power where we see the legendary uh, The Sundering Seas 
be brought to life. Here, Galadriel will need to rely on a human after the two are stranded together in the height of a massive storm. Now, apparently, this scene took several weeks of preparation and filming and consists of 195 different shots. They had to develop two water tanks where they could basically engineer a storm right down to the exact height of each wave. The article goes into a lot more detail on how they did this, and it's actually pretty cool. But I can't help but think that they put a lot of effort and money into something that Galadriel never did in any of Tolkien's work. I don't mean to be a negative Nazgul, I'm just not, I'm just very hesitant about the show. Now just like with House of Dragon, Entertainment released some exclusive behind the scenes photos from Rings of Power. Now I noticed in a lot of fantasy shows, and including here, the clothing just doesn't seem worn, it doesn't seem dirty enough, also the lighting just seems very bright. One of these photos, you're gonna notice that Galadriel is covered in Cheeto dust. Now, if I am correct, my theory is that nacho flavoring affects elves much the same way that it does the animals from over the hedge. And I think it's very bold and exciting that they're taking Tolkien's work into new territory. Breaking news, just today, when I thought I was done filming and done editing, The Rings of Power just had its first full-length trailer drop. I gotta say, while I'm still hesitant about the show, this trailer did kind of win me over a little bit. Visually, it's looking great. The landscapes are stunning. The dwarven home, I'm really loving. It looks like there's a lot of life there. There's what looks like a first age flashback when Galadriel says, you have not seen what I've seen. I don't know the lore behind this. I don't really remember. If maybe you guys know. It looks like there's some bodies floating in the water or something. It got me intrigued anyway. I do think the costume design and the lighting are looking a little too too bright and clean, sort of like the Wheel of Time show. Overall, this is giving me some hope though, and I, I'm just waiting on the writing to pull through. Speaking of the Rings of Power, HarperCollins recently announced that the brand new tie-in editions of The Lord of the Rings are now available. I don't want to just repeat what a lot of people have said about these editions, but I'm just not really a fan of them. They don't really make sense. But there is a brand new all-in-one edition that doesn't, that doesn't look too bad. It looks kind of nice actually, but that sticker, I guarantee you can't peel that off and I hate that so much. Fans of the Dresden Files are going to be very happy. You can now get a signed copy of Stormfront, book one in the Dresden Files, uh, Leatherbound, a Leatherbound signed copy by Jim Butcher. And this is just incredible because I know recently Daniel mentioned how the Dresden Files just don't really have many quality additions. And hopefully this is the start of a whole brand new set of additions for the Dresden books. It's not confirmed yet if they're doing this for all of the Dresden Files or if it's just book one one but they look quality. The leather bound is signed by Jim Butcher. It is fully bound in genuine leather. It has 22 karat gold deeply inlaid on the spine and it is printed on acid neutral paper. It sounds very fancy and expensive, but I want it on my shelf. I actually just started the Dresden Files last month. I'm now on book three and really enjoying it. So this is exciting. And in news controversial enough, there is no way I would force a guest host to cover it. We have also seen an auction for begin from a collection of authors titled Authors for Abortion Access. And this fundraiser is being done through auctioning off either signed or special editions of many of these authors' most well-known works. This includes works from the likes of Rebecca Kwong, Neil Gaiman, V.E. Schwab, even a Ray Bradbury book is on there. I was personally going to try and nab the Martha Wells network effect, but it's already been taken. So I recommend if you'd want to, one, support a good cause and possibly get your hands on a limited or special or signed edition of a book you love, go ahead and check out the link down below. All funds raised from this auction will be going to help keep independent abortion clinics open, safe, and secure. Back to Jay. Season 4 of Stranger Things has been all the talk lately, and one thing that is catching a lot of fans' attention is the very descriptive subtitles. Subtitles such as... Tentacles. Undulating. Moistly. No! Oh, I can't say that. Murphy, I am so sorry. Vulture did an interview with Jeff T, who is the subtitle author, and he revealed that it was it's all fully intentional. He wanted to bring the full intensity uh, to certain scenes, but he also added some trolling in there as well. He even admits to adding in some explicit Dungeons and Dragons references for his own enjoyment. Anthony Ryan's Raven's Shadow book franchise is set to be adapted into a television series that has been given the tentative title Queen of Fire. It looks like the series is going to feature the Legends, worlds, and characters of the Raven's Shadow book trilogy, its sequel, the Raven's Blade duology, and collections of Raven's Shadow short stories. I am very excited to not only read these books, 
finally, they've been on my radar for a long time, but I'm excited for the adaptation as well. Hunter x Hunter is a manga that I've been thinking of starting recently because I've been enjoying the anime, and fans of the manga are, are in for some exciting news. Series creator Yoshihiro Tagashi has taken to Twitter to announce that he is one chapter away from completing the latest release. Togashi also revealed a character sketch from a character from Yu Yu Hakusho, another popular series that he's known for creating. I used to have a Yu Yu Hakusho Game Boy game that I remember playing a lot back in the day. I read some of the manga too. That is such a good series. The Alien TV series has been delayed until 2023. If you don't know, this is a prequel to the original Alien film, and it's going to be taking place near the end of the 21st century, and this is the first in the franchise that is set on Earth. They've confirmed that no pre-existing characters are going to make an appearance besides the Alien itself, so don't go in expecting to see Ripley. Warner Bros. is moving New Line's adaptation of Stephen King's vampire novel Salem's Lot from September 9th to April 21st, 2023. And they say the reasoning is due to COVID-related delays in the post-production. Speaking of vampires, an official trailer dropped for Day Shift, starring Jamie Foxx, Dave Franco, and Snoop Dogg. Jamie Foxx stars as a hard-working, blue-collar dad who just wants to provide for his daughter, but his pool cleaning job is just a cover for his real source of income, which is vampire hunting. He belongs to an international union of vampire hunters. This is coming to Netflix on August 12th. It seems like a good action film with a pretty simple premise. Guys, are vampires coming back? Is that like a trend again? I don't know. I've been thinking of writing some Twilight fan fiction. Maybe now's the time. I've never actually read Twilight. I thought I was done, but there's a lot of new news on the Discord. I don't know how you do this, Daniel. There's there's so much. What is this? Check out the first gameplay trailer for Kingdom The Blood. Based on the zombie horror series on Netflix, the game is set in a zombie-infested version of ancient Korea. I told you, vampires are coming back. Oh, this is zombies. Never mind. Oh, and that's right, Daniel is writing a vampire book as well. I guess vampires really are coming back. Breaking news, The Last of Us TV show finally gets a release window. They just wrapped up filming last month and it looks like the show is going to officially release in early 2023. Video game adaptations are often known for being poor, so hopefully this is gonna set a benchmark for what they should be. Netflix's adaptation of Resident Evil is premiering on July 14th, my birthday. As always, Netflix is releasing the whole season so that people can binge watch it, and the reviews have already been coming in, and they're very mixed. Like, some reviews are saying uh, it's the best adaptation of the franchise so far, while other reviews are saying that it fails to breathe life uh, into the franchise. So, I don't know what to believe. Bayonetta 3 has a release date of October 28th, 2023. Uh, I really enjoyed the first game. I never I never did play the second one. Bayonetta 3 is going to have an additional mode for shy players uh, called Naive Angel Mode. This mode subtly alters the outfits and, and character designs to be slightly more covered up. Finally, my grandma can play Bayonetta. Albuquerque, New Mexico is unveiling bronze statues of Breaking Bad characters Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. I like Breaking Bad just as much as the next person. Don't get me wrong. But it just seems odd to me. Like, they're not heroes or inspirations, and they're not real people. So what? So why? There's still more news popping up. I'm just gonna have to stop it here. That is it for fantasy news. I, I apologize if I miss anything. You can let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, big thank you for Daniel. Uh, I'm super grateful to be a host on fantasy news. If you want to check out my channel, I exclusively uh, make videos on vampires and space goblins. So if that's something you're interested in, then you can check it out. Okay, bye!